this comic was a food, it would be cheese pizza. Because it's still technically pizza, but it's like as boring as pizza gets. This is issue one of volume two of Siphon. I have not read volume one. We'll just assume it was really good, so my expectations are reasonable. I knew nothing about this comic when I picked it up. I didn't know any of the creative team. I knew it was by Top Cow and Image, which is interesting. And I knew it won a Ringo Award. That's nice. So I got into it and I saw the exposition and I realized that it's volume two, not volume one. What can I say? I haven't read volume one. I don't have it. Maybe I'll read it later. Depends on how good this is. The first thing I noticed right away is the colors are really good. These colors are great. And the art is really similar to a lot of artists that I like. You can tell it's not quite as locked in as, as the artist that it looks like it's referencing, but it's still, it's solid. It's solid art. What it reminds me of the most is probably Scott Eaton's work on X-Men Legacy from 2008. He's got this storyline he did with Mike Carey and this excellent coloring and you can see Scott Eaton's pencils here. I think the colorist is Jason Keith and I really like that comic. It's very bright, it's clear, easy to understand, you know what's going on. It feels like its own world, it's consistent, it feels like a modern comic without feeling overdone. So in this comic we got some really well done colors, pretty good penciling and inking. It's a definite vibe, easy to look at, you know what's going on. You can tell that the colorist is the one who's been doing this job the longest because in the bio section his bio is the shortest, which means he knows he doesn't have to prove to you how good he is. He's just good. Even though the art does look very very similar to Scott Eaton's art. It, it seems like it's taking a lot of reference from that. Sometimes, uh, like I said, it's not as consistent. It'll look like maybe he's going for an Ed McGuinness type art, or maybe he's going for Alan Davis type art. I'd be really curious to see who this artist looks to the most for reference. So Thomas Hedgelin, Hed Head Glenn, hey Tom, hit me up and let me know because I'm curious. I want to know these things. You know, something that I probably should not have thought was funny, but I did think was really funny, is when this kid gets his arm snapped in half. Not a funny thing, I know, not not something people normally laugh at. But it took me a minute to even realize that that's what was going on here. Because, look at how much bone is protruding here. And then, and then look, it's like hanging on by a flap of skin down there and you can see all that bone. But there's nothing else in the arm. It looks like, it looks like a puppet arm that has bones in it. And there's no, like, flesh around it. There's nothing else there. It's just way too clean. So I, I couldn't help but laugh because it's just, it's funny. That's a really funny broken arm. Sorry, Thomas. In general, there's some panels that seem really solid. Some panels that look really natural and, and effortless. Most of the time, the poses are a little stiff. Especially on this first page in New York City. It's every time there's a hand, the hand looks weird. Look at that thumb. Look at this stupid little stubby thumb. What's up with this hand? Look at how weird that hand looks. Look, 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 look at that thumb. Hands are hard. Hands are really hard to draw. Look at, look at this guy's face. Is he high? Or, or singing? Or, I don't know what that guy's doing. In general, the facial expressions, I don't know. There's a lot of really good facial expressions in here. I'm not just gonna throw the whole thing out. But some of the facial expressions are a little weird. But hey, overall, the art is really easy to look at. I've read comics with way worse art than this. I've read comics with way better art than this, but not everybody is Alex Ross. What are you gonna do? And then I know that Jeff Edwards drew the interiors for the other issues. And he's not doing the interiors for this. He's only doing the covers. So that's a Jeff Edwards cover. And if you like this art, then you'd probably like the first volume, which had Jeff Edwards all the way through. It is not my cup of tea, but it's really well done. I can see that it's really well done, and I appreciate it for what it is. What I don't like about this issue is the writing. Barely any of the writing was actually enjoyable to me. Mostly because all of the dialogue is so exposition heavy. It's just, hi, have you heard of this exposition? Yes, I have heard of that exposition, and here's some more exposition details for you. There's not a lot of genuine conversation. It's just, here's all the information you need to know in as plain words as I can possibly possibly give it to you. And it's also not even flowing naturally. It's like, it's stiff. It goes from one word bubble to the next word bubble and you just get what you need and then you move on and you don't let anything sit. You don't let anything sit. It's like that scene in The Room, that movie with Tommy Wiseau, where he walks in to buy some flowers and he says, hello, I need my flowers. You're my favorite customer. Hi, doggy. Thank you. If you've seen that movie, you know how awkward that scene is and how flat all that dialogue is. And it's just forced. It's just, there was dialogue. So we said some words and we happen to be in the same room while we're saying these words. That's how the dialogue feels a lot of the time. Just like they had to say something. 
The overall premise is pretty cool. The power set that he has where he absorbs emotions from people is a really cool idea. And I probably will read the first volume so that I can see how they start that idea. But what a terrible superpower. What a terrible superpower. He just steals emotions from people. And then what? And then he's stuck with them. He's stuck with these feelings, whether they were good or bad feelings. Now he's got their feelings. How are you going to use that? I know in Doctor Strange, there's that group of monks who whenever Doctor Strange does dark magic, Magic, they take all the punishment for him so he doesn't have to deal with the consequences of doing dark magic because someone else is taking the punishment for him there's a whole group of monks who do it so maybe it's something like that where he's just taking all the bad emotion from his friends so that they don't have to deal with it which is a nice guy thing to do he's being a nice guy but you can see him trying to do that for people in this issue and he's not very good at it which hey good storytelling but he also steals positive emotions from people he's like oh I feel good I'm just gonna take a little bit of good feeling from everybody else in the room so that I can feel extra good. Okay, that's not a superhero thing to do. And hey, if he was an anti-hero, or if he was just a regular guy going about his business and saying, I don't want to help people. I'm stuck with this thing. I just want to deal with it and move on with my life. That'd be fine. We don't need him to try to be a superhero. It doesn't need to be a superhero comic. That's just a cool idea to explore in the real world. They keep having these scenes in the Amazon rainforest with this spooky temple and some giant spirit demon thing that's coming through from a different dimension and it's gonna bring in its super scary buddy from the super scary dimension and he's like stealing children and stuff and and they're saying that this main character siphon is going to be needed in fixing that problem so there's a bit of a cliffhanger and the cliffhanger is interesting it's definitely going somewhere i don't know what good the main character is gonna do. Seems like a pretty big problem for a guy who just sucks emotions to deal with, honestly. The writer seems like he's just an influencer who also wanted to write a comic book and just share his experiences with the world that he's had while he's been traveling around on some unbelievably high budget that nobody else has. And that's a nice idea. You have a lot of experiences, you wanna share them with people. You have a, come into contact with a lot of cool ideas, a lot of cool culture, and you wanna share it with people. That's, that's a great idea. But man, this writing is stale, and it makes me not care about his experiences. It is nice that he has this double page spread at the very back of the issue about the people of the Amazon and the opioid epidemic, which are both things that were referenced in the comic. The people of the Amazon was definitely way more noticeably referenced in the comic than the opioid epidemic, which was one page and felt very forced. It was just more exposition, 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 exposition. But it's nice that he has those things in the back that he can champion as a cause. He's trying to educate people. He's using his platform to get ideas out there so that people can be educated and helpful. Two thumbs up. I love it when writers do that kind of thing. Now, if only the actual writing was good, then we'd have a full package here. One last thing that I forgot to mention. These panels are too small. There's too many panels on the page and they're too small. Especially this page where a dart comes through a window and hits the main character in the chest and then he falls through a coffee table and then somebody kicks down the door and then it's a big reveal of the person who kicks down the door and they're holding their dart gun and they clearly just shot a dart through him and then in the time it took this guy to fall into the coffee table she went all the way down the building across the street and then across the street itself and then back up the building and into this room where she had just shot this guy. And the panels are tiny. I have never seen a panel where somebody falls through a coffee table that small. It's too small for that much action. And then that stupid line that she has after she's kicked down the door. It's not a good line. So overall, pretty good art. The art is getting there. It's not the most polished penciling I've ever seen, but it's not bad. It's a lot better than a lot of other independent stuff. Coloring is phenomenal. Writing is subpar, pretty flat, pretty stale writing. But I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't that bad. I feel like I should read the first volume. It's only three issues. It's not that big of a deal. I, I'm just not, I'm not super invested. My rating is seven out of 10. What do you think? Today's question from the audience comes from my dad. And he says, why don't you ever review any DC comics? Because they haven't been worth my money in a long time. Be better DC.